Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how to make this style of ear cuff. Um, but I'm going to be adding in a little bead there in the center as well. This is a pretty beginner friendly tutorial and I think is a very good supplement to our um, wire wrapping masterclass lesson four. Like if you've done the first wire wrapping masterclass or even the second one, I think this would be totally approachable. It may be your very first wire wrapping project and you might nail it. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we all learn at different rates on different things. So I'm gonna try really hard to be as clear as possible on this for you guys. Now the tools and materials, everything are linked down in the video description below, as well as the display that we use um, for displaying uh, ears, well, not ears, uh, <laughs> ear cuffs in our booth. Um, these are linked down below as well, and I'm gonna be showing you uh, using that ear um, display. I'm gonna show you guys how I size, like resize and shape these to fit whoever ends up purchasing them whenever we're selling them in our booth. I'm gonna be using 20 gauge wire. You can use 18 gauge, it's a little stiffer and it can be more difficult sometimes for a customer to size on themselves after they've purchased and taken the ear cuff home. But thinner than 20 gauge, I don't quite recommend unless you're doubling up on the wire. Um, just because it, it can be difficult for it to maintain its shape with integrity. And then these beads here are pretty affordable and I so far have not had any trouble with them like oxidizing real bad or turning my skin green, but that's just me. Everybody's a little different. Fortunately with the ear cuff, there's not a whole lot of metal making contact to the skin um, as far as the bead goes. And this is Parawire brand, non-tarnish wire, which uh, I, I've been using for over a decade and never had any problems with. So I highly, highly recommend um, if you're not using sterling silver or if you're not interested in using bare copper that um, that this is the stuff to go with. It's super good, especially if you're a beginner because um, using other wires um like either non-brand or you know sometimes they'll be a little too stiff or a little too soft parawire has a very consistent quality this is not sponsored by the way i just really really like using their wire and whenever we teach in person oftentimes folks will think that they're very bad at wire wrapping when really they just needed to use a higher quality wire because if it's too stiff or brittle of a wire it's working against you so um Truly, the only two tools that are necessary for this are round nose pliers and wire snips, but I do also recommend, it's just really nice to have some mandrel pliers and either a bent nose or chain nose plier can be really helpful in just positioning things. So let's go ahead and get started. Now also, if you're not using the same beads as what I am, we, we are going to be using a uh, I think that's a five, five or six millimeter, a four millimeter, three millimeter, and two millimeter bead. And you could use seed beads, you could use gemstone beads. Um, actually, we're going to be using five, four, and three, and then four and three. So, okay, we are going to pull off about. 12 inches of wire and I wanted to show you how to make an ear cuff set so we're actually going to do um, two at the same time so two lengths 12 inches long of 20 gauge and this is American wire gauge wire and we're going to kind of come in by about a third so a little over well, let's call it four inches. Yeah. Um, so this will be where we function from as the center of our wire. And you can do both wires at once. And now here, either using the thickest barrel, like thickest part of your round nose pliers, or I personally prefer the six millimeter barrel on my mandrel pliers. And just coming, if right here is the four inch mark, I use my hands because I typically have them on me. Um, and this is very 
approximate measurements. But right between my first and middle finger is the, my where I'm kind of mentally marking the center. So I'm going to bend around the six millimeter barrel side. And then I'm going to flip this line where we just bent up with the side so that again, right there where my thumb is, is the center line. And now I'm going to grip again on the other side of the wire and bend around. And so I'm going to measure that exactly. And that is almost dead on one and a half inches from where my thumb is to where my finger is. So now we can take these two wires and lay them on our table so that they are mirror image of each other. And they're gonna be a little wonky right now and that's okay. <clears throat> but we're gonna start by bending, oh, okay. So if you didn't want a bead on it, like this one here, let's go ahead and just do it this way. You could, mm, no, we're gonna have them match, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, indecision, I am rife with it. We are gonna take one of our five or six millimeter beads. Now, if you had a smaller hold bead, um, before doing the second bend, you'd have wanted to thread on your bead, that way it doesn't get stuck on the curve. But these beads here that I'm using have a pretty generous hole. So it's very accommodating of the wire and goes over the curve very easily. So we have, moving forward, our short end and our long end. We're going to bring the long end up around the side of that bead. And then we're going to bring the short end up as well. And we're just going to make a little rosette around this bead. Just like that. And so having done that on one side, we're going to do the same exact thing on the other. Threading it on, and then we're going to bring the long side up, just hugging the side of the bead, and we're going to bring the short end down, and then we're going to continue shaping this around until it matches with the other side. So that's looking pretty good. We're going for sisters, not twins on this one. It's like they look like each other, but they don't have to be perfectly matched. Unless you want them to be perfectly matched, in which case you do you. <laughs> um, so now let's go ahead and do the shorter top edge. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we used a five millimeter, so let's go ahead and use a four millimeter bead up here at the top and we're just gonna thread that on. I wanna zoom in just a little bit more for you guys. I don't wanna zoom in too much cause I don't wanna risk wandering out of frame, but I really want you to be able to see what we're doing. <clears throat> um, I do also recommend following along with our um, itsy bitsy wire wrap, like the spiral master class, as well as we have, and these videos will be linked down in the video description. We have, um, like five easy wire wrap beginner earrings. That tutorial goes very in depth in, into making this type of spiral that we're about to do. So that if this isn't perfectly clear for you, um, those other videos might be helpful. So I'm using my finger to support the bead against the wire and just pulling around. And we can tighten that down. So I'm bracing it, my thumb against to tighten that wire around and shaping it. And now from here, let's measure about an inch. So the length of, from, of my first knuckle on my fingertip. Give it a snip. I save all my scrap wire off to the side. And from here, I'm going to grip the tip of the wire with the tip of my pliers. Whoop, it's okay if it slips off. Sometimes that happens. And I'm using my finger to make a little spiral. And we're just going to circle that in Ooh, through my pliers. 
And you could make your spiral very tight or nice and open and airy like this one here, whichever you prefer. And now we're going to start on the other side. Actually, let's go ahead. The best way, I, I think, for me to get symmetry, this is the best way that works for me, is to do one side and then immediately do the other before I forget what I had done. <laughs> so I am going to thread on to the short end of our wire thread on our bead and if you can see on this side we started the curve off in this direction so I want to be starting the curve off in the other direction and it's very helpful to kind of look at just you just continue that swirling pattern so just coming around and again like that itsy bitsy spiral I just pin the bead between my fingers holding on with my finger and thumb here and holding finger and thumb there and then we just whomp come around and it makes a nice tight little spiral and you can tweak it and smush it around a little bit until it's just like how you want it to be and then again using the same section of my finger some people get really hung up on well how many inches how many centimeters and it's like uh, I use my hands more than anything because I oh I really it's silly but I always have my hands on me I don't always have a ruler on me so if I know that on my ear cuffs I like to have it just a hair wider than my middle and index finger and I understand everybody's hands are different but uh, you may prefer to make yours wider you may prefer to make yours narrower so you'll find I, I do try to provide structure for y'all but more than anything there's there's no wrong way to be doing this so long as it fits it looks the way that you want more or less <laughs> and uh is holding together really nicely like if it's comfortable to wear and holding together then you did it correctly and that goes for all jewelry i think so there we are looking all right so far and so now we're going to put on a four millimeter bead here on the long end of our wire and I like to get a little bit of like a training bend going just to be like, okay, yeah, that looks like how I think I want it to. And then holding on with finger and thumb and holding on with finger and thumb. I hold that bead between my two fingers and whoop, come around, makes that nice little, and it's okay if what we've got going on here in the middle starts to distort, things will hold together a little bit better once we get the final shaping established and you could always add in some like 24 or 26 or even 28 gauge wire to bind that together if you don't like that movement so from here i'm going to do another wrap just to build it up just a little bit just wrapping around and now we're going to do a three millimeter bead And if you're using seed beads, seed beads, you could use a size 6, a size 8, and a size 11. Just basically whatever you can fit onto your wire. So again, I'm going to do that training bend so that I want the bead to be about right there on the wire. And then I'm just going to smoosh this around. And we could stop here and do a little spiral to finish it off. Or we could add another bead which I'm going to do because I love beads and we only did you can see here I did almost two wraps around on this one I only did one there on that one getting that training bend started and then whoop, coming around and now from here we are going to finish this off into a spiral and it's a pretty good length i'm not going to make the spiral yet though because i want to be able to compare that length of wire on this second ear cuff so we're going to go ahead and we had a five or six millimeter bead there in the center so we're going to do the four millimeter again getting a little bit of that training bend going and then bring this around there's once and twice and I think that frames it really nicely and then we can slide on a three millimeter and you could do this without the beads as well just as easily or with only a single bead or you know 
you could make it, you know, a foot long and <laughs> you'd just keep going as long as your wire takes you. And here I have a little bit too much space on that side of the bead and I don't much care for that. So I'm just going to take this and bracing my, you can see the most used parts of my fingernails because it's where my nail polish uh, fails first, but I'm just going to press my fingernail up against that and then cinch it down and it tightened up that a little bit, the space in that loop. So um, hopefully that'll be helpful to you. So there's that. And now we're going to add on another bead. Because sometimes, even after all this time of wire wrapping, I've been wire wrapping professionally since 2008, sometimes the wire just doesn't do what you wanted it to do. And that's okay. I just accept it as what it is and then move on. Because it may not be exactly what I envisioned, and it may not be my idea of perfect, but whenever you're making jewelry for gifts or for sale, uh, sometimes it, it doesn't matter if I like it, if the customer or the client or the person receiving the gift likes it, then it is perfect. And even though I'm the uh, you know the artisan who made it, it's I don't I'm not going to get in the way of somebody else thinking that it's perfect. Like I'm not going to try to convince them that it's not, <laughs> you know. Um, so I'm going to take these. I'm going to put them face to face, and I want these two little wires. I'm going to trim it so that they're both the same length as the shortest wire. And now when we come in to make our spirals at the tip they should more or less be the same size. So just coming in, making our little loop, and cinching in just a little further. And this is where it's perfect to use your chain nose or flat nose or nylon gel pliers to just smush those spirals, make sure they're nice and flat. You could hang charms off of these, you could add in, uh, if you watched our wire wrapping master course on how to make your own ear hooks, we cover how to make a wire wrapped post earring, and you could make a wire wrapped post earring here on the end that kind of, you know, it looks cohesive with the rest of it. And I am going to grip just a little bit and cinch that in a little tighter. There we are. I'm going to do that same thing here on the other side. So I'm gripping, and I'm making sure that I'm gripping behind where the two wires diverge from each other because I want it to be a little tighter. There we go. And now from here we get to do the sizing, which again, you could use, um, I'll do this one, yeah. So I'm just gripping on the thickest part of my round nose pliers and curving in. And then gripping, curve, grip, curve, grip, curve. If you want a more gradual curve, you can grip and curve like that. So here you can see, I actually did this backwards. Um, the tighter side, I like to have be the side that grips this fleshier part of the cartilage of your ear because a lot of ear cuffs I see grip just there on the ear well and there's not a whole lot of flesh to hold on to there so it ends up with a very pinched feeling in an irritated ear whereas if you hold on to that flesh ear part of the cartilage and then just have a stabilizing wire that rests in the ear well um, I, I found it tends to fit a little bit better so I'm going to open this one up just a bit and this is why I really like that 20 gauge wire and I do tend to like to give myself more wire than what is necessary. That way, if a person has a very shallow ear well, I can take the tip of this wire here and I would actually curve it in or bend it in to shorten. Uh, I was going to, we'll just go ahead and demonstrate fully. So yeah, so we can shorten that down so that it fits a shallower ear well. And it would sit like that so whenever we uh, help people especially in our booth to put these on we would just slide this wire behind the ear and this part comes to rest in the ear well and you can see it's very floppy right now so what we do is we'd squeeze down just slightly there on the back and then we squeeze just slightly horizontally and then from here, you can see you don't want that poking out, especially if you have long curly hair. So what we do is we bend like that, bend and bend to get this to curve against 
that curvature of the ear because ears um i've read are more unique than fingerprints from person to person so it's you really want your ear cuffs to be able to accommodate whatever varieties may come along um and you could wear it traveling i personally really like it traveling down because where this little wire is here that little spiral we can take that and yeah don't be afraid to kind of torque the design in like well, torque it torque it no torque is that even oh words are hard um you can twist it about so that you could if you had a piercing there you can line it up and thread your piercing through and then um you know you don't have to worry about losing your ear cuff if it falls off the really I'm not gonna whack it on the table but I mean they're pretty stable on there uh, and um, yeah so I hope that that's helpful to y'all um, but you could wear it that way or and whenever we pull them off I recommend to folks before they put it into their jewelry box or wherever they like to store their jewelry to just open it back up a little bit that way next time when you put it on it goes on nice and smooth and you just squeeze down very gently on that back part and that would hold it in place so and it, we rock off towards the back for it to release off of the ear you could also very easily have it be where the wire travels up and comes to rest in kind of this top part of the cartilage so again we would squeeze boop like that so that it's holding on and then boop like that so that that wire is providing a counter pressure and then here you can see we don't even really need to bend much we need to turn this so that it's sitting flat to the curve of the ear and it's I do free custom sizing on all of our ear cuffs whenever we're vending um, in person but that's also why we make videos like this. So in case you are here watching because you've purchased an ear cuff from us, I do hope that this is helpful in helping you to size it to your ear in particular. Or to help you if you, you know, you're vending and you have, that's not even the one that I made. Um, <laughs> so, but, uh, so if you're vending and you, you want to make ear cuffs to sell to your clients and customers, hopefully that this will be helpful to you to get a really nice, good, comfortable fit because I think so many people have had unpleasant experiences with cheap <laughs> ear cuffs which I mean I say that we sell ours starting at like three dollars so I mean price isn't what I mean when I say cheap I mean like poorly designed ear cuffs that they just expect that it's going to pinch the crap out of their ear and fall off anyways so you know it's uh, just trying to work against that preconceived notion that folks have or can have. So now I'm going to come in and demonstrate with my mandrel pliers. I would just curve like that and then and that was on the thickest part of the barrel and then I'm going to come through on the six millimeter and boop and that's how I typically like to size our ear cuffs if I know that one size what will run side is going to be a left ear and one side is going to be a right ear. So like for this one again would just fit on like that. And I ask folks, and when, again, whenever we're in our booth and we're doing the custom sizing, oftentimes I'll curve it just a little bit before putting it on them. I'll just take it and boom, boom, bend a little bit, bend and bend. And I'm gripping this side of the wire, that way it's not shifting around on that center bead, which there is movement there, but I've never had any issues with it. Um, there we go. And that just sits like that and then again depending on the depth of their ear well we could curl this inner wire in because if it's very deep it's going to be pushing the ear cuff towards the back of the edge of the ear whereas if we take this and let's say the client decides that they would like to try that then we take it and we just bend it just a little bit there on the tip between the pliers and, the thumb. and that gives a wider piece of wire to make contact with the ear. So again, less chance of pinching because you're taking that pressure and distributing it over a wider part of the ear. But you can see how that sits just right there in on the ear well. 
So, and also having these ear displays, I'm going to zoom out for you. Um, having these ear displays is such a fan. I haven't peeled the paper off of it. Um, cause I don't honestly know if I'm going to just yet, but it makes such, such a difference to even just have like, um, a printed out clip art of an ear shape with use a craft knife or scissors or something to cut holes for the ear cuff to go through. Having it displayed helps so much um customers to see and understand how it would fit and sit on their ear so don't underestimate the power of your displays whenever you're vending whether it's for taking photos on um or whether it's for you know taking photos for your website or whether it's for you know vending at an indoor or outdoor craft show or convention or something of the sort so uh, yeah, displays are mega super important. I went with the black silicone because silicone and latex can sometimes have, if I were to put bare copper on this, it would discolor. I, I, I know for a fact it would on the latex. I am uncertain about the silicone, but bare copper, just the metal oxidizing up against the rubber can discolor it. So if we had gone with the clear or the, um, paler flesh toned, uh, display ear there was a risk that it could discolor over time and I figured black would match our mannequins and our other displays and stuff so it looks pretty sharp but also it um, would conceal if there were any discoloration going on from a reaction with the metal. Now we don't have to worry about that I don't think with the enameled wire maybe with the beads we'll see but I'll definitely keep you guys posted um, if we ever experience, like this is a very soft silicone too, so I'm kind of worried about the durability of it over the long term. Um, but again, we'll see how it goes and I will keep you guys posted. So I really hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. If you were here for the premiere, hey everybody, I'm so glad you were able to make it. If you weren't able to make it for the premiere and wanted to, be sure to sign up for our free newsletter because we send out notifications about 30 minutes before um, our new tutorials go live. And that way uh, you, you just, you don't miss a thing. You also get a super nice 15% off coupon uh, so that you can use on just about anything in our shop. And if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them beyond being here and liking and subscribing and all that good stuff, uh, we do have our Happy Crafter Club that you can join either on our website, backtoearthcreations.com, or on Patreon. Links for everything, again, are down in the video description. Um, and starting at just a dollar a month, it helps tremendously. Like a dollar may not seem like a lot to y'all, but it makes our world go around and we, we appreciate every single one of you guys. So thank you again so, so much. And I will see y'all in our next video. So until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>